Hi everyone, this is Mr. Bourne, the math teacher from Minnesota, and this video is going to cover advanced statistical distribution functions. Here's what you will learn using norm PDF and norm CDF and inverse norm. Before we start though, equipment check. You can find out uh, what kind of operating system your calculator has easily by pressing the home on key and then pressing 5 and then 4 on your keypad and this will bring you to handheld status. Look a little bit above the middle and you'll see version. I'm using 3.6 so you should have at least that otherwise what you're seeing on your calculator might be a little bit different from what I've got so make sure it's at least that current. All right, norm PDF. What does it do? Where do you find it? Well, here's where you find it. You'll find it in the catalog, which is the button that has the open book picture on it. And uh, look under probability, um, and then look under distributions, and you'll find norm PDF and norm CDF there. What norm PDF does, basically, is it, um, it draws a picture of the normal curve just kind of like that, you know, on a standard, you know, x, y axis. And um, the original formula here is kind of big and it involves e, the natural number, and uh, you have to put in um, your mean and standard deviation and pi is in there and square roots. I mean, uh, tracing out this curve is kind of cool, but it's really complicated. As you can see, that's, that's really huge and most people don't want to type that in. So norm PDF is a function that'll do everything. You just put in your mean and your standard deviation and you can put in your x value or you can actually put in an x and then it will graph it. The only thing I can think of that you might want to use norm PDF for is for graphing. So bring up a, uh, a graphing page like this on your calculator and then uh, on your keypad control G and here's the editing line where you can put in a function. Press the key marked with the open book and go to normal PDF, hit enter. And if you have your wizard on, you can manually put these in here. For X value, don't put in a number. Instead, just put in X. Now, I'm putting in a capital X here, but it doesn't matter. Capital or lowercase X, you'll get the job done. Press the tab key three times and then press enter. And you have the graph of the normal curve. Now, right now, it looks just like a little bump, but we can change that. I'm going to do some high-speed video here and change the window coordinates. There we go. That's a lot easier to look at and easy to do math with. Uh, with a graph like this, you can do some integration. You can find area under the curve, things like that. This is a lot easier than putting in that big, awful uh, function um, with E and pi and, and everything. Okay, let's talk about norm CDF. This is normal cumulative density function, and you can find this uh, next to the normal PDF if you go into the catalog, and it's under probability, and if you go into distributions, there it is, normal CDF. Now, what normal CDF does for you is it gives you back the area under the normal curve if you specify a lower and an upper boundary. Now, what you're seeing here, this picture, this would be uh, two standard deviations away from the mean on either side of the curve. And so there's your typical 0.95 area under the normal curve. It's best to take a look at how this works with an actual example, and I like to use IQ. So if the IQ is uh, defined as having a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, uh, let's answer this question. What percentage of the population has an IQ between 100 and 120? On your calculator, bring up a page where you can just do calculations and then uh, press the catalog key that looks like an open book and navigate to the function normal CDF. And here you'll be prompted, if you've got the wizards turned on, to put in a lower and upper bound in the mean and the standard deviation. Now, a note, with those of you that have a CAS calculator, the lower bound will be negative infinity. But if you have a non-CAS calculator, it will be this, negative 9e999, which I think is the smallest um, or most negative number that you can possibly put in here. But for the purpose of our calculation, our lower bound is going to be 100. Press tab. The upper bound will be 120. Press tab. And we're going to redefine the, uh, the mean as being 100. 
press tab again and the standard deviation is 15. Tab one more time and press enter on your keypad and there you go. Um, we see here the, vari the, the variables taken in by norm CDF, um, 100 which is the lower bound, 120 upper bound, 100 is the mean, 15 is standard deviation, and our answer here is about 40%. Let's take a look here at another example. Here's where we're going to use IQ again with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. But this time the question is what percentage of the population has an IQ below 120? We can put in the values like this, press the um, catalog button with the open book, bring up normal CDF, and this time you can either put in negative infinity if you have a cast, but if you don't, put in negative 9, the EE button, and then 999, hit tab, upper bound is 120, press tab, put 100 for the mean, press tab again, and then 15 for standard deviation, and there we go, 90% of the population has an IQ below 120. Finally, we get to inverse norm. Inverse norm is also found under the probability menu. Uh, you get to this by hitting the catalog key and you can kind of see where it is right down here. Inverse normal is right after normal CDF. The best way to explain what inverse normal does is to kind of show you. Now, the entire area underneath the normal curve is equal to 1. So half of the area is 0.5 um, and where along the x-axis or what z-score would that be if the area was 0.5? Well it would be right here uh, in the middle right at 0 uh, if we're taking uh, the mean to be 0 and standard deviation to be 1. But what would that z-score be if the area under the curve was um, 0.25? And so here we can kind of take this slider and adjust it and do our very best here to get um, 0.25 and that's about the best I can do and we see here that the z-score is approximately negative 0.66 well using inverse norm uh, we can get to be a little bit more exact by pressing the uh, catalog key and going to tab number two and then going down to probability and then finding distributions it's the third one down, inverse normal, and uh, the area we want is 0.25, so we're given the area, and mean and standard deviation will just go with the regular ones and hit enter, and that is exactly the z-score, negative 0.67. There it is, so that's the last one. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this entire video. Parts 1 and 2 of this three-part series are available by clicking on your screen there. And if you want to see some more fun stuff, you can go to www.andyborn.com math. All right. See you next time.